Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to prepare Illustrator files for 3D Invigorator. So let's dive into this. Let's uh, switch on over to Illustrator. And so the first thing to talk about is how to prepare text. And this one's a pretty easy one. In this case, we've got some text that's been wrapped around a circular path. Now, usually you're going to do text within 3D Invigorator itself, but in this case, since Illustrator has so many options for aligning text on paths, you may want to occasionally import text from Illustrator. And so really the only thing you need to do here is to make sure that your text is converted to outlines. So you can see in this case we've already done that. Each letter here is a separate outline. Normally everything starts off as just you know fonts around a circle in this case. But if we come up, if we select our text and then come up to type, if we haven't created them as outlines, this option will be available, create outlines. And actually if I open up the original file here, we'll be able to see that. So we'll come down here to my tutorial files. We'll open up the gold medal illustrator file. And you can see that each one of these are just text on paths. And if I come up to type, I can go to create outlines and select that and it'll turn my text into outlines. And so that's how you're going to want to save it out of Illustrator to bring into 3D Invigorator. And when I go back to 3D Invigorator, if I bring in my gold medal outline text, open Illustrator file, go to gold medal outlines. You can see it brings it in pretty nicely and we can shrink the depth down a little bit to make it a little bit uh, nicer, a little bit cleaner. But really that's all you have to do is just take the text that you type in Illustrator on path or otherwise and uh, just convert them to outlines. And so I'm going to delete this and move into the next tip for dealing with paths in Illustrator. So let's close this up. Now the other thing to know is that 3D Invigorator really only deals with closed paths. And what that means is if I have a wave like I have here, and I try and bring this into 3D Invigorator, what's going to happen is 3D Invigorator is going to close this path for me. So it's basically going to draw a line from this point over to this point and use that as the shape that is going to create a 3D object out of. So if I go up to Open Illustrator file and I open up OpenWave, you'll see that it looks like it's connected those two points and we've got this line running th through the middle and instead of kind of a nice sine wave type of shape, we have this kind of convoluted, weird looking thing. Almost looks like a bridge or something like that. And that's really not what we want. What we want is a nice kind of clean sine wave type of shape. So we're going to delete that. And we're going to open up our closed wave file. Now if I jump back to Illustrator, let's take a look at that. Now what I've done here is simply taken my open wave. I've duplicated that, copy and pasted it, and then just joined the ends. So if you have a shape like this, we'll copy, we'll paste it, and we'll kind of move it over into uh, position, sort of. And we'll create a empty fill for this, so we can see everything. Now we're going to grab our direct selection tool, and we're going to select both of the endpoints, and come up to Object, Path, Join. And that's going to join together those endpoints. And we'll do the same thing on the other end. Again, go to Object, Path, Join. And so this is going to create a closed path. And so now if I bring this into 3D Invigorator, you will see that it gives us exactly what we expected. Except for the fact that at the moment I have the front and back faces turned off. So it's coming in as kind of a uh, ribbon looking thing. And if I turn on my front and back faces, 
Now I have a proper wave shape. And we can shrink that down a little bit. And so that's the thing to remember is that you want to have a closed shape. You want to make sure that when you leave Illustrator, there is no endpoint that's just kind of loose and kind of dangling. We want to make sure that everything's closed off, everything's connected, and we have exactly a solid closed shape. And that way, Invigorator will know what to do with it, and you will get something that looks pretty much exactly like what you were going for. Now, the other thing to know in the case of complex shapes is that they need to be grouped. If I have two hearts like I do here, um, what we want to have is a heart-shaped hole in the center of this and not have these combined in any other way. We want this area here to be negative, to be you know hollow. And to do that, we have to group these objects together. So if I bring in the ungrouped version, let's uh, delete our wave. Select it and delete it. And we'll bring in a new Illustrator file. We'll bring in the ungrouped heart. And you can see that this simply brings in both hearts together and they don't really create what is called a Boolean, which is the smaller heart becoming the cutout of the larger heart, creating a hole or a hollow area. So you can see that if I select my heart here and move it around, we actually have two hearts. And that's not really what we want. So we're going to delete that and grab that one, delete that one, and then go back to Illustrator. And we're going to go up to Object Group. And this will group them together. So this basically becomes one object. If I grab the selection tool and move it around, you can see that it moves around nicely together. When I deselect it and then select it, both paths get selected. Now if I come back into Invigorator and select the heart grouped, you'll see that we get a nice heart with a nice hole right down the center. So we can rotate around this and look straight through the hole and fly through it if we want. All sorts of exciting options. But that's really the basics of setting up paths in Illustrator. Again, just to kind of recap briefly, you want to make sure that complex objects where you have multiple paths together are grouped together. That way any overlap will be seen as holes or negative areas. You want to make sure that all of your paths are closed. You don't want to have broken paths or loose ends or anything like that. You want to make sure that they're nice solid paths all connected together. And in the case of text, we want to make sure that everything has been outlined. We want to make sure everything's been turned into outlines just using the create outlines command. So I hope you've found that informative. Uh, we've got lots of other tutorials on digitalanarchy.com, so make sure you check them out. And uh, thanks for joining me.